Welcome to part two of week nine, mobile app one. We're continuing building our project here in HTML for our portfolio website. And we've kind of noticed a problem right off the hop with our images not loading. So we're gonna figure out what that's all about. So what we can do is right click in here and you can either inspect the element um, or we can look at the source code. So let's try inspecting it. And it's actually gonna open my developer console on my other monitor here. So I'll bring that over and let's see what the problem is. So we've got slash images slash poker dot PNG. Now I think I know already um, what's happening, but we'll go into my images folder. And okay, so we do have the image poker dot PNG and that is running. Chrome. Okay, and let's just double check this one. Inspect the element and see what link it thinks the image is at. Okay, we've got a console error. Profile underscore picture dot JPEG was not found. It's fine. We know that already. And I just want to make sure I'm not running my app offline for anything. Cache storage, this network, disable cache, sources. Okay, cool. All right, so let's figure this out. Let's go into our source code and let's take a look. So index.html slash images underscore profile picture. So here we go. There's my image. So I know it's there. And go to index.html. JPEG. Let's see if we can figure this out. Try a dot before that. And I'm also going to hit the go live button so I don't have to keep refreshing my site in the browser. And oh, that worked. Okay. So obviously it has something to do with referencing um, the folder structure with a dot in front of the slash which I was kind of wondering, sometimes it can be a bit tricky, the syntax. Let me know if this works for you guys, but adding a dot in front means it will go up a directory and then come into the images folder itself. So um, it doesn't really make sense when I say it, but from the index, it has to come up out of the index file up into this main root directory and then go slash images. So let's see if that works for the rest of these images as well. It worked for me, yep. That worked great. So for some reason, it's a little bit weird that it didn't work last week <laughs> uh, or it did work last week. Sorry. And then didn't work this week. Now I've somehow lost my image to the exercise app. So I am going to just quickly look for it in my downloads here. Cause I must've deleted it. Downloads. Let's look for this image. It might be quicker, so many downloads. It might be quicker for me to just find a new exercise app image. Fun. So this will just be a little bit of review for how we add an image. Okay. Let's see. I like something like this, sure. This app icon, okay, save image as. Okay, and we wanna save it into this directory. So I'm gonna copy this path. Copy, paste it up into here where I'm saving it. And I'm gonna save it as whatever I've already referenced it to. Oh yeah, see, that's weird. It was .png.cr slash download. It's gonna be .exercise.png. Hopefully it's a PNG file that I downloaded. It's an htm, okay. PNG. We need to be the same file type. There we go. Save image as. And my computer's lagging a bit. This is one tricky thing here. You gotta be careful of when you're getting resources for your projects. 
HTM or other certain type of files won't render as an image. So you have to just be careful of that. This one looks like it might be a PNG. There we go. Exercise.png. And I'm going to make sure I save it in my root directory in the images subfolder. Perfect. Maggie. And if I refresh this, da, da, da. oh, it didn't work. Exercise.png. I got to save this file. There we go. There it is. We've got a nice green theme happening. So I might play with that a little bit later. But for now, let's take a look at some of the stuff I've got planned to look at today. Okay. So on W3 Schools, the first thing I want to talk about with you guys is creating a header or a nav bar. And there's a couple different ways to do it. And we're going to look at a different, a couple different ways. And you can choose what you uh, like as your favorite. Um, but we can do it with CSS. We can do it with um, the header tags, or we can do it with a custom nav bar. So what is a header? A header is, um, you might see something like this on a big landing page. Uh, maybe let me think of a company that does this, like DJI with the drones. Here's a big header, right? And they've got a big header banner with their new DJI Mavic 3 um, that they just released. It's got two cameras. There you go. You know, and they've obviously made an image as the background image carousel as the background of their header. A lot of companies do this. And then you have this at the top, which is what I call a nav bar, navigation bar for navigation, navigating the website. Now you can use the header tags to make a nav bar, um, but it's best used to do something like this, which is what I mean when I'm talking about a header. Okay. Um, there's also something called footer. It's a footer tag, and it's the same idea, but at the bottom of your website. So when I talk about footer, just so you guys know what I'm talking about, if I scroll to the bottom of DJI here, we can see there's this giant thing here at the bottom. Let me turn my highlighter on my mouse. And this is called a footer. It contains about information, privacy policies, use of cookies, terms of use, contact information, social media links, language choice, etc. right? All of that good stuff kind of at the bottom last case, last resort sort of area for a customer to look if they can't find what they want up here in the nav bar. Okay, so we're going to build those things on our website, but we also want to create a, t a way to navigate our page more cleanly. Okay, and that's with a navigation bar. We can build one in CSS like this, or we can build one um, in HTML. So we'll start here and we'll kind of decide what we like better. So we can hit this uh, try it yourself button. This is how I like to use W3 schools, by the way. And we can see the code that they've got here. This is um, a style tag, which is kind of like CSS code is in the same file as your HTML. Now for our example, we actually contain all of our CSS code in a separate file called style.css. It keeps it cleaner, keeps it neater, but if you ever want to do that, it is possible to put CSS code in the same file. You just have to put it in what's called a style tag. Okay. So then in our body, we can see they've got a div and they gave it a class of top nav. And that class is being affected by these selectors, background color and color. So let's change this color to red and see what happens. Ah, so it changed the active tab to red. Now, if I click this, obviously nothing's going to happen because it's not actually changing my page, but it would make that the active element and change it to red. So we've got another class here called active. And depending on the page you're on, it will affect that tab choice. So for my projects page, you know, right now I'm on projects.html. That's my active tab. Now, when I go to about, now that's my active tab. So I want to be able to indicate to the user which page they're on just from the nav bar without, you know, having a giant header that it, that's describing it, right? Okay. So that's what the uh, red color does. And the white is obviously the text color. If I change this to blue, then the text will go blue, right? 
Just undo that. Find the uh, color they had before. Okay, now um, they've got a couple other items here in their nav bar. They've got news, contact, about, right, whatever. Um, we can make these whatever we want, and we can see that the link's not actually bringing them anywhere. Um, but you can reference this the same way that we've already referenced our other pages. Um, now let's see what else. They've got some text underneath here. This is just whatever. This could be the rest of the content on your page, the image. Um, all right, I like that. And then let's see, what did they do differently in the CSS version? Yes, okay, so before I can talk about this, Before I can talk about this, this is my mistake, I should introduce a topic called lists. Okay, so we talked about what a header is, what a footer is, what a nav bar is. Before I can actually introduce a nav bar to you, we have to talk about lists in HTML. So a list is just a simple way to order items in say a set of bullet points or numbers. Now you have two ways of doing this. You have an unordered HTML list and that's with the UL tag, which stands for unordered list, UL. And then within the UL tags, okay, so the UL within them nested and tabbed in is an LI, which stands for list item. And you put all of your list items inside of the unordered list in there. And what this would do is it will make a bullet point of lists inside of your code, right? So we can try this. We can go to one of our projects. Um, Let's say, actually, I'm gonna copy my about.html and I'm gonna rename it to, um, what page, what project do I want it to be called? Poker.png. Or actually I'll do budget underscore app.png. So I'm gonna make its own page. Well, budget underscore app about.html. So when a user clicks my image on my projects page, so what I'll do is I'll put an A anchor tag around it. And I'll just take my image tag, cut it and tab it in. Now I will reference inside of my anchor tag, which we learned about last week, ahref I can go to slash or I don't have to do slash I can do budget underscore app underscore about dot html there it is and that will take us to this page and on this page budget underscore app underscore html which I don't want to be accessible from the nav bar. I want it to only be accessible from the projects page. We will call this uh, budget app. And then down here, budget app. Um, we'll do a little bit of an example with uh, talking about lists. Budget app is all about serving you and your family for all your budgeting needs. Now, um, this can get very tiring typing all of this kind of like example code. Um, so there should be a way, close this, to just fill it very easily with what we call um, like filler text, lorem ipsum, and you can do lorem ipsum generator and you can just get a bunch of filler text. Lorem ipsum is just a bunch of Latin words or whatever that allow you as a developer to see what it would look like if you had multiple paragraphs all filled out instead of you having to type it all yourself. Now there should also be a way lorem ipsum visual studio code shortcut. Don't know what the, if I do control shift P or type lorem ipsum and select insert. Okay. So let's say, lorem uh, see how i started typing that lorem if i hit tab there we go i just got a whole bunch of gibberish right here 
I just hit lorem and then hit tab. Yeah. And then as a suggestion, it'll give you a bunch of random stuff. So now if I go to my site, which one is it? Projects. And I click my image. Here we go. I get a whole paragraph about my stuff. Now I don't want my paragraphs to be that big anymore. So I'm going to actually affect my styles. Tag. Very good. Now, let's say I'm going to keep typing lorem a couple times. There's something called the BR tag, which, as you know, we talked about earlier, does line breaks. Or there's also something called the HR tag, which stands for horizontal ruler and what's nice about this is say we have a bunch of paragraph text but we want to separate it with some type of visual element well what we can do is have a horizontal ruler or this nice line so the br tags we can see here that's these two you can see the blue highlighting i'm highlighting the empty space of each of my breaks and then the hr itself is also a way to visually separate or segregate elements on your page so here I've got a bunch of about information with my text it's center aligned because that's the styling that I've chosen for now. Um, and we can look at squishing this in uh, a little bit later to make it look nicer for the width. Um, actually, I wonder if take a look at this here. Width. Do 70%. Margin left, auto, margin right, auto. So we that'll center it. And then we want to do width, 66% maybe. Up there, nice. And then I don't want it to be text align center, to be text align left. There we go, very good. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. So what I just did, you could make a class called container or you can just apply it to each item that you want to kind of be, you know, not taking up 100% width. We like having a little bit of white space. As humans, it looks a little bit neater to us when we actually separate elements with enough white space. All this text right next to this image looks a bit busy for us. So it might be better to have a bit of white space under all of this paragraph text. Um, so what we can do is add a couple breaks. This is not typically the best way to do it, by the way using HTML to add breaks, it would probably be better to add some styling on top of our image or at the bottom of our paragraph to go, you know, padding top or margin, perhaps margin top. And we would go top 50 pixels. It's not great to hard code values like that because you want everything to be relative and dynamic, but there, we've got a bit of space in between. Okay, cool. Same thing with um, our paragraph, margin top 50 pixels. So just a couple things like that, cleaning it up. It's looking nice, okay. Now we would obviously change this image to be our budget app image, and I want it to be more at the top. So let me see, budget app image, instead of profile picture, we want it to be budget app. And we're gonna move this div up underneath our header, underneath the title, but before the paragraph. Perfect, let's take a look at what this looks like now. Okay, cool. So here's our budget app. I actually think I might like the image on top of the title. 
but you can decide what you like better there like that. I think I like that better. Cool. All right. How's everybody doing? Working out so far? I feel like I'm all over the place because I was talking about lists one minute and I'm just making this page work before I show you how lists work. Okay. So we've got this page set up for our about uh, this specific app, budget app. Okay. Now we want to use lists. So let's take a look at what an unordered list does. So we would do a UL and inside of the UL tags, we can do LIs. Now you can have as many LIs as you want. If I just do one, um, you know, Let's take a look at this. This is what it looks like. Okay. So first of all, it's way over here because it's not a paragraph tag. It's not going to have the margin on the left-hand side because it's not a, uh, you know, H1, it's not going to be centered and it's not going to have the same font size because it's not a paragraph tag either. So how do we fix this? Well, that's what I was talking about earlier with the container. So we'll leave this here. And we're going to come back to our styles and we're going to actually remove some of these things. So margin left auto, margin right auto, um, and width 66. And we're going to apply them to a class called container. Now this doesn't actually exist yet, so it's going to give us an error, but I'm going to move lines 9, 10, and 11 inside of my container class. So now, if I apply the container class to something that surrounds both my list item and paragraphs, then they'll both be indented the same amount. So what I'll do is use a div, and we kind of introduced divs a little bit last week, and I'll give this div a class of container. Okay, so now, if I refresh it right now, nothing's going to happen. Actually, it's going to look pretty terrible because everything's outside of that div. But if I move everything inside of this div container, so all my paragraphs, all my lists, and I actually tab them in, okay, so here we go. We've got our container. This contains our entire page, even our title, perhaps. Oh, we'll leave our title out of it for now. Check out what happens. Now our list item is aligned with this. Pretty cool. Now, we still have to make the font size the same. So we can do that by just adding the font size 1.5 VW to the UL, um, the UL tag in our styles. So let's see here. We can also do it this way, I think, font size. IBW. There's always more than one way to, to skin a cat, as they say. So everything inside of my container is now going to be 1.5 VW for font size. All right. And then we don't actually need it on our paragraph tag because I already have it applied to the container class. Cool. Very good. So this is what an unordered list looks like, and I can add as many of those as I want. Here, if I just copy this, paste, 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 right? And you can, you know, list whatever features you want for your app here. Now, I personally think that this looks pretty bad way over here all by itself. So I'm actually going to make a class called inner container. And uh, so we've got pictures container, we've got container. Now I'm going to make a class that's a container within a container. So inner container. And this is just going to be a custom class um, that's actually, I'm just going to make the width slightly less and maybe the font size a little bit bigger. Um, 2 VW, and I'm going to make the width maybe about 40%. Okay, and then I'm going to put this UL inside of a div itself and by the way, you don't have to copy this. You can just use these concepts yourself and apply them however you want. But now what I've done, uh, oh, you see, I've got the div, but I didn't apply the class. Class equals inner underscore container. Now it'll follow that. 
So whatever's more detailed in CSS, uh, it will go with that rule instead. I'm going a little too fast. Okay, sorry, I'll slow down a little bit. I understand, okay. So maybe I wanna list the top three features of my app. Now, because what I'm trying to explain here basically is because this class has a more, how do you explain it? It's inner nested. So it's gonna to go to this one first. It'll apply this rule first, but then this one will overwrite it because it will hit it second, if that makes sense. So because my style first says, okay, you're gonna be 66% width and 1.5 VW, but then it hits the inner container and it goes 40% width and two VW, that's why it's gonna look like this. So these are two VW and this is 1.5 VW. All right. I will slow down. I'm sorry. I can see I'm going a little bit fast. So basically we've got one giant div, a div inside of that with an unordered list. And I wanted to talk about unordered lists. Now I'm going to copy this unordered list and I'm going to show you what an ordered list is. So much like our unordered list, an ordered list is OL. Now you don't have to write the OL because I think unordered list will actually look better for this example, but ordered list always changes the U to an O and we get numbers instead of bullet points. And I also put a little HR tag in there and you'll notice the HR element is only the width of whatever the container is inside of it, right? So because I made this 40% width of whatever the entire page is, as I shrink this, it'll stay 40% of whatever my view width is. So if we're on a phone or a tablet or, or whatever, um, yeah, pretty cool. Now, I actually like the look of bullet points better than numbers, but it's totally up to you, whatever you like. So I'm gonna actually delete my ordered list. I'll keep the HR. And I'm gonna actually just, uh, this app is completely, Free. Um, I'm just going to put some filler text in here as you guys catch up a little bit. Save money. Just making some stuff up. I'll zoom in a little bit too, because I believe text is probably a little small. Cool. All right, just throw me a thumbs up whenever you guys feel you're ready to continue. Um, I realized I went a little bit fast there, but ultimately we just made an extra page and um, this extra page, just been spending some time styling it, adding some content telling people about what my app is. But we haven't actually made a header yet. We haven't made a nav bar. So those are the important things for you to get out of today. So we've got, you know, some stuff about our budget app. Now, something I wanna talk about quickly, and we'll cover this next semester, so don't worry about it today, is responsiveness. And responsiveness means that your app responds to the screen size. Now. My app does respond to the screen size. You'll see this as I shrink it, it responds and shrinks. But the problem, and what I really mean by responsiveness is your device type. So right now I'm on a desktop and this looks great to me on a desktop. But if I go on my phone, okay, and let me see. Dock this. I go on my phone and I was loading this app on my phone and it looked like this, it'd be almost nearly impossible as a user to even read what's in this paragraph. Um, and you know, if I rotated it, maybe it's a little bit better because it's filling up 
a larger portion of the screen, but it's not really responsive to me uh, as a user on my phone. Whereas if we take another look at the DJI website and we go on our phone here, okay? So this is the desktop version, obviously it looks great. And they probably spend a lot more time than, you know, one week doing this. Check this out. The text isn't actually that small. And if I go this way, look at that. Let me actually refresh. Pretty cool. And this isn't even a great example because see how I can go left and right still on your phone. You, you pretty, you want it to actually, um, fill the screen. You don't want the user to be able to do horizontal scrolling. Another good example would be something like YouTube. I know Google would have it for sure. So YouTube, um, well, that's obviously not the phone version. Anyways, I think you get what I mean when I show you in my own app that it's not really great for a mobile user. So we'll talk about this next semester using something called Bootstrap, but for now, don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about making it mobile friendly just yet. Cool. Okay. Um, I think I saw a couple thumbs ups, any thumbs downs people wanted me to, to wait and hold on another minute. Okay, cool. Great. Awesome. Okay, and I will post the recording. If I did go too fast, you can pause and, and replay it. <clears throat> but I will try to go at a, at a better pace. Sorry about that. Okay. Just get excited. Now, so we talked about lists. And lists is something we had to understand. Ordered lists and unordered lists. Um, in order to make a nav bar, list is something you have to understand before then. Now, there's also something called detailed lists. Um, it's just if you want a nested list like this, coffee, and then you nest in some items underneath of it. Um, that is signified with a DL and a DT and a DD. Um, I'm not going to get into that because I don't actually ever find that I use them. Okay, so moving on from lists, we've got some examples in our app. Um, we talked about hyperlinks a little bit. I made a hyperlink uh, with my anchor tag. So a defines hyperlink, stands for anchor. You put your URL in the href, and then you put the link text itself in here. The most important attribute of the A element is the href tag. Um, so pretty, pretty basic. We covered a little bit last week, just thought I'd talk about it again, just so you understand it. So you can have uh, the text here, and that's gonna actually take you um, to the link itself, right? And we can tell that because it's blue, but see how they've put the a tag inside of a p tag well i can keep typing you know let me get rid of all of these just so you understand how the href tag works i can click in between the p and the a, a tag here and i can type please click and then i can do this and this is what i do on blackboard for you guys please click here to access this link and i'll add a space there so that there's a space between here. And then it's pretty obvious that I have to click here. <laughs> My mouse changes to a little cursor, it's blue, um, that that's a hyperlink. But I can still put text around it that's not a hyperlink. You don't have to type everything in here. Please click here to access this link because then you'd have a giant link and it just doesn't look as pretty. So just a, a quick note about that. Um, to use an image as a link, we just did that. You just put the A tag around the image um, and then you can actually add some style to it as well. Um, you can link to an email address if you wanted to open up their email client. And you can also do buttons. And we'll talk about buttons a little bit later. What else? You can link around titles. You can link around, really, you can link around anything, to be honest. Cool. All right. So back to our nav bar. So basically what a nav bar is, now that we've talked about links, is it's a list of links. So you can see here, 
we've got UL, which is unordered list, and then a bunch of LIs, which are list items. And inside of the LIs are A tags. So we talked about links, we talked about uh, hyperlink tags or A anchor tags. And then inside of those hyperlink tags are all the different pages for this website. So let's take a look at this. Basically, we get what we expect, a bullet point list with hyperlinks to different pages. Now, if you just want to do test links, you can just do a pound hashtag or whatever, and it won't actually take you anywhere. It's just going to be like a test hyperlink. If you actually want it to link somewhere, you do the page.html. So they're just saying, notice we used href for test links. In the real world, this would be URLs. Now, how do we make this uh, bullet point list of items into a nav bar? Well, we have to style it with, with CSS. So we start with something like this. Um, so let's do that now before we get into the styling. So let's get that set up on our end. Okay. So, um, Oh, I have a good idea, actually. I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to call it nav.html. And this is going to be interesting for you guys. And in our nav.html, take this code. email and paste it there. Okay. I'm going to change this to just like what they had it on the website. So UL. Now we already have our anchor tags here. So I just need them inside of LIs. LI and LI. Whoops. Perfect. So we're going to just take this code, I'm just cutting and pasting it in between my LIs. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I've got a file called nav.html. I've got my UL, my LIs, and then my links to my pages inside of my LIs. Nothing too, too fancy going on yet. <clears throat> Throw me a thumbs up when you guys have got that uh, sorted on your end, and then we'll get to the next part. Cool. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. Sorry, just one sec, just looking up something here. Perfect. Okay. So we've got our nav bar. Now let's take a look. I'm going to copy this. Now this is in a separate file. I'm just going to copy this for now and I'm going to put it in my index where I deleted it. Okay. And we'll go load our file here. I'm going to go to my index page and we should see something like this. Now my portfolio page, this is not centered anymore. And it's not big text anymore because guess what? It's not inside of a container. It's inside of a div, but the div doesn't have the container element. Oh, it's not even inside of a div. So check this out. We've got a container for our pictures and we've got a div with a class container for all of our other content. So I'm just cutting and pasting that stuff, tabbing it in. 
Perfect. So now if I save this, there it is. It's centered. It's big again. Cool. And I'll just put a bit of lorem text after my portfolio description. All right, there we go. And we've got our header up here. Sorry, not our header, nav bar up here um, with our bullet points. Okay, so going back to W3 schools, so how do we use this? So we wanna remove the bullets and the margins and the padding from the list. So how do we do that? Well, there's actually a couple different selectors and applicators that we use in CSS. <clears throat> so the first one, list style type none so just like how you can put it in the ul um, or ol type of list so unordered or ordered list you can also affect the style of list in the css so there's nine different ways to skin a cat right especially in html and css you can do a lot of stuff styling wise in html but you can also do a lot of styling stuff in css so just like we can say uh ul or ol unordered list ordered list we can do list style type ordered, list style type unordered, and you can change it in CSS. So here we're gonna say list style type none, and it's gonna take those bullet points away. Then the margin will set to zero and the padding will set to zero. Now, important thing to mention with margin and padding, um, if you don't specify margin hyphen top or margin hyphen left, then it will apply it to all four. It'll apply it to margin left, margin right, margin bottom, margin top, and we'll do it on all sides. Same thing with padding. Padding is very similar to margin, except instead of, you know, setting a space between you and the next item, it just sets a certain amount of space around your border. Okay, very similar. So let's try this. I'm actually just going to legitimately copy paste this code. This is like the only time it's okay because you're not plagiarizing. It's just um, W3 schools showing us how to actually remove uh, the list style type in the CSS. And it's the, that's the CSS code you have to use. So that's not plagiarizing. That's just how you have to do it. Um, so here we go. Let's take a look at our page and let's see what happened. Perfect. The margin's gone. The bullet points are gone. And padding is gone. So we basically stripped it of everything. And we've just got a, a list of hyperlinks. Perfect. Everyone good so far? Sweet. Okay, cool. Well, cool. Next thing we want to do. Oops. So we don't want to do, well, I don't want to do a vertical navigation bar. That's like this vertically. Um, sometimes it's a good idea on just a mobile screen to have a vertical because mobile screens are set to favor vertical positions better. Um, I actually want to do a horizontal nav bar, which I keep scrolling. Here we go, horizontal navigation bar. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you can either use inline or floating items. So one way to build the horizontal navigation bar is to specify the LI elements as inline in addition to the standard code from the previous page, which we just did. So now we're affecting our LI class in CSS and making the display inline. And what that does, uh, by default, they're block elements, which means they stack, right? That's what a block does. Here, what we're doing is we're removing the line breaks before and after each of those blocks and we're gonna make them display in line or all in one line is what that means. So another way to do this is with a floating item. So we can try this, let's do it this way first. It seems easier. So we've affected our UL element, which is our unordered list element with this styling. Now let's affect our LI, so our list items, all our list items with this styling. Now here's the problem, okay? You'll notice it will look fine until we go to our page where we already used an unordered list. Okay, like if I go to my projects page and then I open up this, 
Remember I had a list here with bullet points? It's gone. <laughs> and that's because we took the margin away and we took the list style type away, right? So I would actually have to give this a separate class or a different ID so that it doesn't get affected by this styling. And we can come back to that later in a little bit. For now, let's just continue to build our header. So we'll go back to home. Okay, so I wanna affect LI and I wanna do display inline. Okay, and let's see what that does. Let's go here and see how they were stacked on top of each other. Now they're going next side by side. Very good. And if I go back to my project page, we can see this kind of happened here, but because it's a squished div, they kind of just wrap, word wrap to the next line. That's fine. Cool. Okay. So moving on, the other option, whoops, for what we can do is um, we can make them, oops, we can make them floating list items. And the way we do that is instead of doing display inline, we do float left, but then we also change all of our anchor tags to do display block padding eight pixels and then give it a background color. Now either works. The float left will now use, um, it'll keep them as block elements, but it will make them float left um, to the left of each block. And then um, it'll allow us to specify the padding between each one. So we're just adding eight pixels between each of them because they're gonna go right butt up and next to each other on the left-hand side. So we're giving eight pixels in between each one and then we're just adding a gray background. Okay, so um, next thing we wanna do is give it a background color. So here we're using a dark gray. So background color and then six Ds with a hashtag. So let's try that. Background color. Go. Seems like it's a light gray. Let's take a look at it. There we go. So far so good. I might want to make that text a little bit bigger, but we'll come back to that a little bit. The next thing we want to do is change the background color of the items. I'm going to change, turn my highlighter off, but you can see the background color changes here, right? When I hover over it, um, when the mouse over item is triggered. So here, um, we might actually prefer to use the float left item. Let me try this. It's fine. Okay. Actually, you know what? I like the float left better because it allows us to customize it a little bit more. So let's change our thing. Instead of display inline, let's change it to float left. Right? And then we'll also add this code for our anchor tag. Already got something affecting the anchor tag? No, I don't. Okay, good. Sweet. Now let's take a look at it. Very good. Adding eight pixels display block background color. Sweet. Okay. So it's down there. Next thing we want to do is margin padding overflow hidden. Let's see what that does. Yeah, so it gets rid of that space at the top above called the overflow. Um, so there was some space between the, the very bottom bar of our browser and the top of our nav bar. So overflow hidden just hides that extra space, um, which helps us out, makes it look a little bit neater. And then, You'll see something like this, where they've got actually two selectors 
with their elements in CSS. And what this does is it will only affect elements that are, that have both of those. So instead of it affecting all of the LIs and all of the anchor tags, it'll only affect anchor tags that have LIs or list items in them. And in this case, the only thing on our website that has anchor tags with list items in them is our nav bar. So what we want to do is uh, display block, color white, text align center, padding 14 and 16, text decoration none. And what that's doing is it's making the color of the text white. The display is now set to block, so they're going to have some border to them. They're, um, or not border, sorry, but they're going to have, you know, how do I describe it? Almost margin on each side of them because we hadn't added any margin. Here we have padding, but we're actually gonna change that. So LI and A, copy this. I change this. Okay, and we get rid of the padding and we change the background color. Keep the background color here, I guess. In the UL. Perfect. Okay, so let's see what we've got so far once we add that. Okay, so it made the text white. Very good. The background color is a little bit of a light gray now, so it's kind of hard to see the text. So I, I might change the background color here to be a darker gray. Um, you can pick whatever you want. Visual Studio Code has this nice, you know, Hover where you can choose a color. I'm going to do a bunch of fours and let's take a look at what that looks like. There we go. That stands out a bit more. I still need to make that font size a bit bigger. Um, so what I might do is go back to my code. Whoops. And just get that. Let's come in here and do font size 2VW. And let's take a look at that. Does it look a bit better? It's kind of too big for my liking. So maybe I'll do 1.5. How's everybody doing so far? Following along okay? <clears throat> now this last option, what this does is it, you see it has a colon hover. Now there's something in HTML that the browser can detect when the mouse is hovering over an element. And you'll see my cursor change from a pointer to a hand or finger because it knows I'm hovering over this button. And they've also added something that changes the background color of that button just to the slightly darkest, darker green color. And we can also add this property by using the A hover because you're hovering over an anchor tag. So the A is the anchor tag. And remember, it has to be an anchor tag inside of an LI. And when you hover over it, it will change the background color. So let's try this and see if that works. Look at that. Now, when we hover over this, we've got a nav bar. Okay. So it's great. Looks good. Professional. When you hover over it, it changes. You know which one you're on. Great. The only other thing I want to add now is when I'm on a page, I want to know which page I'm on by kind of giving it a class of active. Right? So add an active class to the current link to let the user know which page they're on. So uh, what we can do here is do, uh, yeah, that's right. Try this. Okay. So we're making another custom class, calling it dot active. Now, I might make it a bit of a darker green just because some of my other apps are green, the images that I used. And let's take a look here. There's nothing that has the active class in it yet, but if I come here and if I give this list item a class of active, look at that, it's got a dark green on it. So now I know and when I come to the about me page, obviously we haven't copied our script, our nav bar over yet. So that code is only available to the home page. 
Now you don't have to have the active class, but you can add the active class. You just have to make sure it's applied. If you're on the home page, if I'm on index.html, active class is for index. If I'm on about page.html, then the active class is down here on the about HTML. Cool. Um, if you want to right align your links, you can add uh, this inline style. So there's a way to add style to your elements without having to put it in the style.css file. You can actually do it inline inside of the actual HTML tag itself by adding the style property. And then they do float right. If you want to have a little bit of a border on your uh, header, then you just do the border right property, one pixel solid, and then give it a color. And then if you want it to be fixed so that it's there the entire time, even though you're scrolling. So here's an example of what a fixed nav bar looks like. Then you just have to add position fixed to the UL class. If you want it to be fixed to the bottom, you just do bottom zero. Here they did top zero. Um, if you want a gray nav bar, then you just change the color to gray background color here to F3, F3. If you want it to be sticky, okay, here's, here's an example of what sticky means. Okay, watch, this is the nav bar. And as I scroll, once it hits the top here of this little gray window, it's gonna stick to it. So that if I'm at the very bottom of the page and then I decide, oh, I wanna go to the next page, I don't have to scroll all the way up to see the nav bar. It's sticky and it's stuck to the top. To add sticky, you just have to change this position to sticky. And if you want to work in Safari, you have to use a WebKit sticky. Internet Explorer does not support sticky. And Safari requires a separate prefix. Um, you also have to specify at least one top, right, left, or bottom for the sticky to work. So I, I don't mind sticky. For us, it won't really make a difference right now because I don't have that much scrolling. You can see though, as I scroll down to the bottom because my image is here, my nav bar disappears. And I don't really like that. And I also don't like fixed because it's always there. Um, sticky is a bit nice. Um, it really depends on your preference. So use these settings, use these um, you know, preferences to change it how you like it um, because there's so many options. You can change the color, you can change the border, you can change the, the font size, the text, the font family, um, the sticky, You know, if it's on the top, the left, you can make a vertical nav bar. I'm just showing you the basic, basic examples of what we can do here. Um, you can add drop downs, and the way that you add a drop down is uh let's see here you have a couple drop down classes and then you have some drop down content so there's a couple other things you have to do and then inside of your first a href drop down you have a nested div with that custom class of drop down content and then you have nested anchor tags with links in them right and then you have a drop down so a little bit of work and you can definitely kind of go down a rabbit hole but Spend a bit of time customizing it. I'm going to just customize mine a little bit more because I want them to look original. I want them to look like your own code per se, uh, obviously, because we're not in the business of taking other people's stuff and we don't want it to all look like uh, W3 schools example either. So uh, I've made my font a little bit bigger. I'm going to change my color to a bit of a nicer gray here style.css brighter a brighter greener go darker gray so it pops a bit more perfect all right i like that i like the look of that cool so That's all because we have this here with the class of active. And then because we have style affecting ULs and LIs. Now we'll have to do a little bit of fixing up stuff like this when we come here. Obviously I don't want this looking like this. So maybe what I'll do on my budget app about page is change this from an UL to an OL. And hopefully that'll fix it. There we go.
Oh, because I got rid of all the margin. Let's see here. Hmm. couple other things that are still affecting it, like the margin that I got rid of and the break line is showing up here. Um, if I add, obviously I can get rid of it pretty easily doing it this way. This is not best practice. There you go. You can get rid of it like that so that the text isn't showing up after it. But... I'm not going to really judge the way you decide to do your um, your styling right now because you guys are still learning. But as we get on later in the year, you know, we'll figure that out. So, okay, uh, let's go home. And there we go. We see we've got a nice nav bar. Now, here's the problem. We want to be able to have this nice nav bar on all our pages. Now, one way you can do this is, um, okay, let's see. One way you can do this is copying this little bit of code from UL uh, to UL here. And then I'm going to close all my other pages and then just open up my main pages. So I've got index, I've got about, and I've got projects. Okay, and then I can just copy and paste to replace that so that I've got a header, right, in all of these classes. So now if I come back to my page and I go to about me or projects, my header is, is universal across the whole website. The problem here is I need to change which one has the active class. Okay, because you'll notice as I switch between, even though I'm on projects page, it says that home is the active one. So what I got to do is come to projects, take this class equals active, put it down in the projects li. And now, there we go. As I change each one, it updates. Another way to do this, okay, because let's say now, after projects, say I want to have a new tab for contact me. Let's say, you know, halfway through development, I'm going to just copy my about page and rename it. Let's say contact. Well, now what I have to do is I have to come in here. I have to make a new li, call it contact, go to contact.html, and I have to copy that and paste that like three or four times so that it's the same on all my pages, right? So now I've got the contact there, but if I go to about me, I have to update the header in the about me. And if I go to the projects, I have to update the header, sorry, the nav bar in the projects. So, well, how do I do it so that I only have to update it in one spot and then it kind of trickles down? I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay. So I take this code that we wrote and that's where this file comes in, nav.html. I put this in here, I paste it, okay. Now, I don't know if the active classes will really work in this example, so I'm just going to get rid of it for now. Okay. This is where we can use a little bit of JavaScript and dynamically load this nav.html file into all of these. So it might seem like a lot of work initially, but it saves you time later on. So how this works is... move this over. I just want to double check that I'm going to do this right.
we have to use a little bit of JavaScript to dynamically load each of the pages. Uh, do I want to do that though? I don't want to get things too complicated. Mm. Maybe we shouldn't. Another time, I think in the future, just because I don't want to get you guys too confused with, uh, you know, if we're just learning HTML and CSS, unless you guys feel up to it, I can show you, but then I'm introducing a whole new beast, which is JavaScript and scripts and script tags and creating functions and loading. And if you don't want to have to worry about any of that stuff, um, then we don't have to worry about it, but you can give me a vote thumbs up for thumbs up for skipping it and thumbs down if you want to learn it. Okay, cool. It's like an anonymous vote, except everyone can see what everyone says. Okay, so we'll skip it because um, I don't want to. Uh... Sorry, Harshit. <laughs> um, I don't want to confuse too many people, and I feel like I'm already going a little bit fast. So if you do want to learn how to do it, take a look at this page. Um, first answer there is is how you would do it. You include that script tag, and then you dynamically have a placeholder nav uh, div. And then you use a script on each page that will load nav.html, which is this page that we made, and it will dynamically load it into each page. And then it will load it into that placeholder tag. And what you would do basically is where if you make one change here, it applies it to all the pages, right? Um, so that's what that does. But we'll just close that for now. We'll come back to that another time. Okay, so let's take a look at our website and let's see what we want to change next. So we've got a nav bar. And it updates when we click each page and we hover over it. It looks pretty. I think my homepage I'm happy with. It's, you know, my name, a bit about me and a picture. I might change the order of this or the font style, but totally up to you with how you do that. Um, the about me page, let's fix that because that shouldn't be way over there. So let's fix the about me page really quick. About me page, this should be in a container. So I'll just tab these in and add a couple new lines and do a div, whoops, and nest them in the div. And give it a class of container, save it and should be there. Perfect, that's my about page. I'll add some lorem. That is not what I wanted to do. Maybe you have a bunch of stuff on your about page that you want to share about yourself and that's all I'm kind of doing here. So it looks something like this. About me, wow, pretty cool. And up here. Now, let me show you something kind of interesting here. This. I put my picture container in between my title and my thing. So what happened is because the container, okay, container class shrinks everything to 66%. And then my pictures container class, again, shrinks stuff. So it just changed my photo to be a little bit smaller, but I actually wanted that because I didn't want it looking too similar to my homepage, right? This is my homepage. Here's my about me section. Um, so I'm happy with that. You can, you know, obviously experiment with this. I just added some break lines, some paragraphs. You could add some lists about your skills um, and whatever. Education history, etc. Okay. Um, now the projects page. Let's take a look at this. I want to try to fix this because, well, first of all, we can fix that. We can put that in a container. 
So same thing we just did, div class container. Put that, put that in there, tab it in. There go. And now, because this has an A tag around it, it's a different size. Um, Okay, let's take a look at this. Here's container, which does box margin left, margin right auto just by content center, which width 20, height auto. Okay, so on my projects page, there's another thing we can add to this height. 50 width. Let's see, let's see what that does. To a, see if that makes a difference. I just want to try to figure out how to get it back to looking like what it was before. Um, let's see here. Do it. IMG A. There we go. Whoa. Pictures container A. Kind of getting somewhere. There we go. So that's the same size. They're all the same size, but now they're not centered. So margin left auto, margin right auto. Justify content center. Nope. So what I'm doing is I'm applying the class to the anchor tag as well. And I'm having a bit of a tough time with it. Go, we just want that to be centered. Okay. Um, display flex margin left auto margin right. Justify content center. That should be. but I'm also affecting the A tank tag down here. So another cool thing you can do is right click inspect element and you can actually do, uh, whoops, get rid of this. You actually do some changes live um, if I go like this and move this up, close this console, we can change some of our styling here. I can hover over and I can see what's maybe causing it to do or behave the way it's behaving. So first of all, I want to find the item I'm trying to edit, right? And so it's this container, pictures container. Okay. And if I hover over, we can see the entire thing is here. There's no padding, no border, no margin. So it's all in here and it says div display block. Um, however, in my code, I have it supposed to be uh, display flex, right? But what's happening is because this is a more lower level um, selector for CSS is because of the cascading way cascading style sheets works, the most detailed always wins. So, uh, it's actually using display block. And we can see that here. And if I change this to flex, I can actually double click in there. Should be able to double click in there. Div display block. Display block. I change that to Flex. I'm trying to actually new style rule. 
pictures container, display, flex, check out what happens. Inline flex. Oops. And you can actually, um, you know, as you edit, see your changes take place and see if that's what you want to happen. Now, if I don't want margin, or if I don't want display, maybe it's margin. Margin left, auto. Or let's see, what? You can just go through them all <laughs> if you don't know which one is going to do what you want. Because I'm having some trouble with this. And once you figure out which class you need, then uh, then you're good to go. Uh, let's see. Center. And it's not working. I have to play around with that one for a little bit. It's the only thing. A little bit of trial and error that comes with CSS and HTML. You want to comment something out? Do control slash. Hmm. I think it might be because I've got float left on there. Some of these. Anyways, I don't want to waste too much time on it. So if you guys figure it out, then that's awesome for you. Uh, I'm on the spot right now, so obviously <laughs> I can't figure it out. But that would just be my last thing that I would change there with my project page. Obviously, me commenting all that stuff out ruins the header. So then we fix that by undoing it. But yeah, it's getting there. So we would have, you know, You'd put anchor tags around each of your images to a custom HTML page. And then when I click this page, it takes me to an about that app with this section. Now, obviously, I've ruined my image tag by commenting out it display block here. Anyways, I can't remember what I changed now. So I'll leave that for you guys to figure out. Um, but yeah, then you've got your your uh, your website. Now you can see I don't have the uh, nav bar on this page because I didn't add it to my uh, budget underscore app underscore about dot HTML, but I can easily enough add it by just copying this 
going in here, going like this and adding it right at the top where the header used to be. Pasting it and look at, there we go. We've got our header back. Very cool. Now, something we can do if we don't want to mess up, uh, no, we'll just, I'll just leave that. Okay, some, something else I wanted to talk about today. So we've got our headers out of the way. Fix that up. Is, okay, or our nav bars out of the way. If you want to make a header, I kind of already have one with this sort of thing. But if you want to make a header with like a cool background um, or an inset like that, there's a couple other classes here that you can use to do that very quick, you know, whatever, go and try it yourself here. Um, all they've done is they've made a header class and then they've added some, you know, uh, background color, font size, and then they just make this really big header for their page. And then they just give that class to a div, put their content in it, and then put their actual site content underneath. The last thing I wanted to talk about today was a footer and a footer is basically at the bottom of your page. Remember it has all your contact information in it. You can actually use an HTML tag called footer and then put, you know, paragraph tags and a anchor tags with uh, hyperlinks in it to your, to your Facebook or your social media links or anything like that. So what we can do, we want to make a footer. They've got some styling here that they've already used. Um, so we can just, you know, Take a look at what that is. Go into our styles.css, footer, and then let's take a look at what we're working with by default. I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna do this, but obviously in your projects, I don't want you to uh, just copy paste it. Okay, so footer always will go as the last tag in any HTML page right before the closing body tag, right? So in here, we've got a footer author and say, um, I'm going to get rid of this and let's just put, uh, you could put an icon or you could put, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, if you wanted to mail to actually, this is cool. We'll do this. Benjamin.vinaragon at college.ca. I'll just say email me. Okay. So let's take a look at what this footer looks like. Here, scroll to the bottom on our homepage. And look, so we've made the background color salmon. The text obviously isn't centered. Um, I can give this a div of container again, whoops, class equals container. Save that. It's sort of working. It's line center. So we come to, uh, that is good. Change the color to match my green. Okay, so I would obviously want this text to be centered, uh, which it's not doing right now. But if I take away this class, take a quick look at this, get our footer set up. Oh, because it's a P tag. Ah, uh, there we go. And our style that CSS affects P tags, text align left. That's what's happening. Okay. 
So what's happening is this is overriding it. And that's what happens in CSS all the time. You have to be careful about it. Um, what you can do, and this is not necessarily recommended. Um, well, we can give it an ID and an ID is technically a lower level than a P tag. So we can do hashtag footer div, what did I call it? Footer underscore div. And we can do text align center. Hopefully that would fix it. No. So that obviously fixes it there. So mine left. Hmm. Oh, I know. Here we go. So never mind what I just said about ID tags. Something better for me to teach you. We don't need this div around here. So because it's a P tag and I have a text align left in my P tag, but in my footer tag, in my footer tag, I have text align center. What I can do is I can label this as important. And what will happen is because it's labeled as important, that now has more priority over my paragraph tag. And what should happen Still not working. It's the way to override styles that cannot be overridden any other way. She should give me a hard time. Text align center. Okay, well, what I could do, just for the sake of moving on from this, <laughs> let's put this in an H6. Oh, my goodness. Line break, there we go. Perfect, now it's centered, a little small, H4. Cool. And then if I click this email me, it'll open up my mail client. And that's what that mail to does. It opens up my Gmail and it'll have an email pre-written out to the email that I specified, which is kind of the cool thing there. Anyways, um, that's how to create a footer. Please use all these W3 school links and more. There's so much good stuff on there. I feel like I barely touched the surface of what is possible, um, to create. So, you know, obviously I got stuck in a couple of places and this is literally only like three hours of development work that we've really put together. And I think it's not perfect. Okay. Let me be honest. It's not perfect. And it's not, you know, the most amazing website ever, but I also think it looks pretty okay. <laughs> like, obviously I could spend another two hours on this and make it look way better. And I'm sure you guys will for your assignment. It's 20% of your grade. So, um, oh, I've broken my image reference again. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys for creating a header and, you know, cleaning up some of this stuff a little bit, um, making your pages look a bit better and more uniform. Um, you know, just spend the time, do some research and, uh, have fun being creative and customizing it to your own liking. Um, that's pretty much all I had for today. Sorry that I got stuck a couple of times that probably doesn't help make anything clearer. Um, but uh, good luck with your assignments. They're due in five days. So I think this is a good starting ground. And I'm excited to see what you guys submit um, for your first uh, version of your website. So I'll stop this recording.